The independence assumption does not hold in this case. I'll write a no over here. Um, because we have dependence between subgroups based on x. So here it looks like we have just one data point for each day. So um, each subgroup based on x is only one value in it. But it looks to me um, like the values are going up and down in a, in a way that's correlated between days. Uh, so for example, if you tell me um, on this day what this y value is, it looks to me like the data is going kind of above the line, above a possible line, below a line, above a line, below a line. If you tell me that on this day, the stock price is, is way above the line, way above where it kind of should be given the trend, that tells me something about what the next day would be, right? It's unlikely that the next day is just going to randomly be down here, right? Um, given the way this data looks. So I do see here a correlation um, between the days um, and therefore we don't have independence between. The third assumption, again, is also going to sound a lot like a, a t-test. This is going to be normality, but normality of what? Okay, this is important. Normality of what? What has to be normal um, in, a, in a linear regression? So let me show you what doesn't have to be normal. Let's start with it this way, okay? I'm going to try to, try to show you what, what does not have to be normal in the regression first. So let me draw a perfectly good regression model here. Um, perfectly good data set that could come from a regression model. Suppose that X is binary. It could be zero or one. That's fine for a predictor in a regression, right? A predictor could be um, something binary, like are you a college student or not? And here's the outcome variable. I'll draw a bunch of values there, and I have a bunch of values here, and this could be my data set, okay? So if you think about this data set as I just drawn it, what would, it, what would, would X and Y each look like? Okay, I would, if, if I had a way to see your sketches um, easily in a survey, I would have you draw them. So actually, pause for a moment, maybe pause the video. Try to draw um, a histogram of what the X's look like and a histogram of what the Y's look like, um, if you looked at each variable separately. But now I'll draw them for you. So if you look at the X's, well, X variable can only be equal to either zero or one, right? And it looks like I have about, about the same number of data points with X equals zero as I do with X equals one. So if I made um, a histogram of just the X's, what I would see is there's a certain number of zeros in the data set and the same number of ones in the data set. That's what the X values are equal to. Half the time they're zero, half they're one. That's not normal, right? I said this was fine for regression, but it's certainly not the predictor that has to be normal, right? It's fine if the predictor is not normal. What about Y? Okay, let's look at Y. Well, I didn't put any um, numbers on this, but I can. Let's go like this. What I see is a whole bunch of values centered at 10 and a whole bunch of other values centered at 20, right? So if I made a histogram of Y, well, it might look kind of like this, right? Here's 10, here's 20, right? It's by bimodal because there's two different groups of X and they each have different means. The X equals zero group is centered at 10 and the X equals one group is centered at 20. So if I looked, if I look, I'm, I'm imagining kind of looking from this direction, right? Um, it's an arrow looking this way. If you look from this direction, um, what you see is two mountains. So Y is also not the thing that has to be normal. We do have a normality assumption to regression, but it's not the X's and it's not the Y's. So what is it? What is it? Turns out it's normality of the Y values for each subgroup based on X. So if I look only at these values here, okay, that they are supposed to follow a normal distribution. I'll draw it sideways like this, okay? If I made a histogram only of the Y values where X is equal to zero, those are assumed to be normal. And also, if I made a histogram only of the y values where x is equal to 1, those are supposed to be normal. If you break the data up into subgroups based on the values of the predictor, and if there are multiple predictors, you want to break them up um, into little groups of data points such that in each group, they're the same on all the predictors. For every subset of the data where all the predictors are equal to the same value, the y values are supposed to look normal. That's the assumption. That's the normality assumption of a regression. It's not that the predictors are normal. It's not that the outcomes are normal. So you can't just take your data set and make histograms of each variable and claim you know something about the normality assumption. Rather, it's the, the subset of the data based on x 
has to have normal or is assumed to have normal y values. Now, there's a word I haven't used yet right now, but I think it's a word you may have heard before. In fact, I think you've heard me say it before in the context of trees. That word is residual. What is a residual? A residual is defined as the actual y value for a particular data point minus the value of y predicted by your model for that data point. The actual value of y minus the predicted value of y. Okay, so another way to say this is that it's the residuals assumed that are assumed to be normal. So if you look at my picture here, I'll try to draw some residuals. So here is the mean of y given that x is equal to 1. So like for this data point over here, the residual is equal to, well, it looks like the actual data point might be something like, I don't know, 22. And the mean of all the y values when x is equal to 1 might be 20, right? So maybe 22 minus 20 equals 2 might be the residual. Each of these data points has a certain distance from the middle. If I made a histogram of those, that histogram would be centered at 0, right? And it is assumed to look normal. The residuals are supposed to look normal. If you take this, either one of these normal distributions, and just slide them down so their mean is at 0, that's what's supposed to look normal. Okay, so we said that the linearity assumption was crucial, although it's never true. We said that the independence assumption is really important, um, and that, that often is true depending on how you collect your data. Um, what do you think is, I'm going to say about the normality assumption? Do you think that regression is robust to the normality assumption? Yes. 